I'll start by commending Senator Dibble with his, um, with his bill, current bill, who, which, you know, it's technically a lights on bill, and, and I, I know he's been working really hard along with uh, the members of his committee, which I'm a part of, of the Transportation Committee. And, uh, you know, we've been meeting for a long time talking about the needs of our, our state in terms of infrastructure. We've taken so much public testimony over the, the course of this session, and we worked on a really, what we thought was a, a really uh, sensible approach to, to make the investments that we need for our state. And the bill that we have here today, I believe, falls short to those needs. And that is why I am moving the A14 amendment, which I believe will uh, basically um, bring those investments back into our discussion. Um, it does seem like a, a long bill, so I'll, I'll let members um, give some members some time to digest it. But it's nothing new, members. It's really uh, what the Transportation Committee recommended uh, initially to pass in, on this body. So a lot of you have already um, seen it in other committees, have um, been exposed to it um, in discussions. And this bill, um, this amendment, what would do, it would have another sensible um, approach to funding the needs of our, of our infrastructure, roads, bridges, transit. So I'll walk a little bit through it, and, and I'll stand for questions as well. Um, this bill, this amendment does have uh, a gas tax, and it will be a phased-in approach. It's uh, smaller than um, the original bill that we pass out of committee in a different form. Now we're doing a 2.5 uh, gas tax increase in the first biennium, followed by an additional 2.5 uh, cent in the next, in the following biennium. So a total of, of five cents. In addition, we do the increase in the uh, Metropolitan Area Transit Sales Tax, and that would be a quarter cent in the first biennium, followed by another quarter cent in the following biennium, um, up to half a cent um, in total. And members, the, these investments, this revenue that would come in would be to fund the roads and bridges, to fund, again, transit systems that we so desperately need and, and, and that we've been hearing in our Transportation Committee over and over again. Then mo a lot of you in this room testified in those committees with your proposals uh, for investments in roads. Well, members, this is the way to pay for them. And I, I was elected and ran for office to work hard to make a difference in our state, and I just cannot accept a lights on bill in transportation when I know um, that that is what I'm hearing from our communities, from our state. The number one issue uh, that we have overwhelming consensus that we need for the state is transportation, is infrastructure. I, as I told them up in my mind and wrote some notes down, I spoke to no less than five different people, members of this body, in the majority party, several of which asked me to speak in favor of provisions and amendments they were going to add back to this bill. Members, this is just a few minutes before we were taking up this bill. They were asking me to stand and speak in favor of issues and provisions that were going to be amended by them into this bill that were very controversial, and they thought it might help. And I said, yes, I would. I'd be happy to try and help in an effort to get this bill to the point Five different people I talked to, no less members, not one of them mentioned there was going to be a gas tax in a delete all amendment. Now, did they lie? No, certainly I'm not calling anybody a liar. But is that a half truth, part truth? I'll let you decide. It sure isn't in the spirit of doing what's right for Minnesota. That goes back to the promises I think you made. I'm sure when you got your little campaign kit and you got your note cards, the things you were supposed to be talking about, this is our message for this fall, moving into 2012. It's tax the rich, top 2%. That's a promise you made. Oh, and you're keeping it. You're keeping it, but you're taking it a lot farther down, you know, because you know what the gas tax does. In fact, you know why the governor doesn't like the gas tax? I'm with the governor on this, and you know what? Most Minnesotans are, and they're going to love him for it, and his popularity is going to grow because he is not for the gas tax, and that's an argument. That's a discussion you're going to have to have over in that corner office, and Minnesotans are going to be very curious to hear how that turns out and where we end up because what this does, what this bill does with that gas tax, 
I think you're realizing now it's a deal breaker. It's a deal breaker for many in this room. It's a deal breaker, maybe, for the governor. We're going to find out. You're going to find out. But what happens when we raise that gas tax, members? You know, people have less money to spend. You know what else happens when we raise the gas tax? It's a known fact. Personal savings go down, members. When we raise the gas tax, it's a known fact. Disposable income goes down. It's a known fact. When we raise the gas tax, our border communities suffer.